This bike is designed to go 200 miles per hour and break the land speed world record. It belongs to a chap called Neil Campbell who's going to be attempting to do exactly that. But the engineering here is completely insane. I mean, look at the size of this chain rig. The bike is completely custom and I'm gonna tell you everything about it. But the other thing that you need to know is that during his last attempt at doing this, he crashed at about 175 miles per hour and the bike still bears the scars of that crash. I'm gonna show you them. So starting with the damage, most of it's down the left side of, of the bike, which you can see why when you, you see the footage of the crash. But this whole master cylinder here has got a huge, it just looks like an angle grind has been taken to it. Big scuff on the, the brake uh, lever at the end there. Big gouge taken out the bar end grip there as well. Um, this bolt as well has been completely ground down. The pedals, I mean, look at these, that, that is all that remains of a Jura Ace pedal that was just took the brunt of the impact. Um, the saddle as well, which is a Griffin uh, Pro saddle, huge chunk taken off the side of that. Um, and you can see more damage at the back as well on the track dropout. Um, what I should also show you is his boots. So this is completely crazy, but these are um, also a pretty interesting bit of tech. So, so these are motorcycle boots that he has to wear because of the speeds involved. So they're Dainese boots, which he's modified with a carbon sole from a road cycling shoe bolted on to the bottom um, with then Shimano cleats. But you can see the wear on the side of that from the crash. I mean, if you were just wearing normal road cycling shoes, it doesn't bear thinking about. Um, I mean, both of them are just completely taken right back and you can just see how the, the road has cut through the carbon and uh, also the steel of, of the cleat bolts. It's, I mean, they tell a story. So at, at those speeds, Neil's doing about 80 meters a second. So you can see how quickly it's, it's you know, gonna grind something down. Um, but if you want to see more information about the crash and, and how it happened and also learn more about what Neil's trying to do, we have a, a video on the GCN main channel as well. Now, back to the, the sort of rest of the bike. Now, I previously did a video on Neil's bike prior to this, which was called Silver Eagle. Some of you may remember that. It was six years ago on, on GCN Tech. And on that bike, he had Shimano 105 pedals, but he's actually upgraded now to Jura Ace, although he is gonna need a new set. But that's not gonna be as straightforward as it looks because, well, you may have spotted that the chain set is the opposite way around, uh, which is, unusual and interesting. And so the, the pedal threads need to be reversed. So the pedal axles need to be swapped around um, because pedals have opposite threads for left and right. Um, the reason for that is, is to have the, the gears work in, in the way that it does. So the gear is designed to multiply the effort. So you've got two chain rings, not one. Um, which means that if I try and turn these cranks, I mean, I don't, I can't. Oh my goodness. This is ridiculous. This is like all of my strength is going into this. You can see that already that rear wheel is spinning much faster than I'm turning, turning the crank. So this chain ring that's on here at the moment is a 70 tooth on the front. Take that Josh Tarling. And on the back is a 63 tooth. And <laughs> what's absolutely shocking about that is that that's his warm-up gearing. <laughs> so um, when he's attempting to go 200 miles an hour, he's putting on a 90-tooth chain ring, which I'll get you now. So this 90-tooth carbon fibre dinner plate, uh, it's made by Fiberlite, completely custom. Um, it's going on to Jura Ace uh, track single-speed cranks, um, which are five bolt. But this thing is huge. Also very stiff, um, but absolute monster. And Neil has calculated using his, his gear calculation chart that he reckons that at 105 RPM with this on, he'll be able to do 218 miles per hour in theory. So a bit more about the drivetrain before I move on to the rest of the bike. Because it's a single speed effectively, um, there's no way to tension the chain on this front 
chain setup. So we've actually got an interesting solution, which you do see on some fixie conversions, which is an eccentric hub uh, in the bottom bracket to give you that chain tension. The rear one uh, effectively has a, a track style dropout in that the rear wheel can be slid forwards and backwards to tension the chain, uh, depending on how um, you gear it and, and, and and what sprockets that you choose to put on there. The whole bike itself, as I mentioned at the start of the video, is completely custom. This frame was actually designed and built by some Formula One engineers, and it's steel because it just needs to be really strong. And going to crazy places all over the world to try and do this record, it's, it's practical as well. It's something that can be repaired quickly and easily almost anywhere uh, compared to carbon fiber which would if there was a problem could be much more difficult uh, at the front of the bike we've got this massive head tube and that's to house some massive bearings because this fork is actually a, a KTM uh, motorbike fork with massive suspension. And that's because the forces coming through the bike at those speeds uh, on rough surfaces, it's, uh, well, it, it, it would probably be too much, far too much for, for a normal bicycle fork, which could just fail under those extreme loads. And so that's why this is required. Uh, same with the tires as well bicycle tires just aren't rated to those speeds. And so if there is some piece of debris or some bump or a stone or something, that could cause a, a bicycle tire to fail catastrophically at those speeds and the results would be horrific. So you have to have motorbike tires to deal with these forces. So these are R17 uh, motorbike tires and they're actually it's a it's a front motorbike tire specifically but that's what's being used on both the uh, front wheel and the back wheel um, they're about 90 millimeters wide so wider is faster i guess um, the other interesting thing about the wheels for me as a nerd is that i can see they are balanced as well something which is going to be absolutely crucial at those crazy speeds if you start to get a bit of a, a wobble or a bit of a bobbing in the wheel i can see the uh, the wheel weights attached there uh, on the wheel uh, neil's also told me that the reason why you need moto tires and wheels is because at, at the speeds he's trying to go there's so many other forces come into play that you just would never normally comprehend. And apparently the centrifugal force becomes so great in the wheel that if you were using a normal bicycle wheel and tire, the strength of the, of the bead and the hook on the wheel is not strong enough to keep the tire on the rim. The tire will detach and centrifuge off the, the wheel rim, which is insane. I mean, imagine if it was hookless, it would happen even quicker. <laughs> but uh, that's not all. There's even more stuff. So th the valves here are screwed in and are metal. And apparently that's also really imp important because if you just use standard valves, like the standard uh, plastic Schrader valves that you get on most car and motorcycle tires, again, at these speeds, the, the, sh the Schrader valve will push in and disappear inside the wheel potentially and also deflate the tyre as it depresses itself. So again, that, just that a little detail there, that's something that's absolutely crucial that you just would never normally have to think about, but it gives you an idea of, the, of just how crazy these speeds are. So you might be wondering what this is, because you don't normally get that on a bike, but during this record, Neil is sat behind a, a follow car that he's he's drafting off and this is to stop him crashing into the back of it so there's a bar in at the back of the car and this contacts it so that the tire um, doesn't hit the back of, of the vehicle um, in theory um, that's the idea and then this as well also holds the tow line which gets him up to speed so when he goes to bonneville um, next year he'll be aiming to be towed up to over 100 miles an hour before he's released and then accelerates up to the record uh, that is actually a, a sort of boot catch i'm told from a Volkswagen Lupo that's been repurposed and put on here. Never has a boot catch on a Volkswagen Lupo gone as fast as this one, which is absolutely nuts. Um, and that's actually controlled uh, on the bars via these grip shift levers. So these aren't for changing gear, um, thank goodness. If anyone's ever used grip shift, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but those grip shift levers are designed to uh, release the catch there. The other one is not currently in use at the moment, but that is, in if if potentially required is for a 
for a parachute. So if you've seen the video I did on Silver Eagle, you'll remember that that did have a parachute on the back. Um, as a result of it having a parachute on the back, it also had a massive, really cool steel uh, mudguard fender to stop the parachute going into the rear wheel. He hasn't got a parachute on this one, although it is something that you could, in theory, fit to slow you down. The reason being is because slowing down is also hugely important. The previous attempts he's done um, have been on runways, where you only have about two miles to play with to get up to speed, but then also to, to decelerate. So a parachute is on there as a safety measure, so you don't just end up going full chat in, into, off the end of the runway, um, which could be catastrophic. So we also have massive motorcycle brakes on here, because, um, yeah, slowing down at that speed is not straightforward. <laughs> um, other cool little detail is we've got a custom top cap from, from Caps Guru uh, on the steerer, just like you would on a normal bike. Um, we've seen them on, you know, bikes of Tour de France riders and stuff. Um, but it says, TJ, this one's for you, Forever Sunlight. So that is a, is a nice little tribute um, to one of Neil's supporters who, who sadly died. Um, but he, he said to him he was going to put that on there um, as a thing. So yeah, nice little detail. Then the, the seat post um, is a shock post, so it's got a bit of suspension travel in it. And that's because on previous attempts he's been doing on runways, they can be pretty bumpy, particularly um, Elvington runway in, in North Lincolnshire um, has some quite big bumps and ruts in it. So that just takes a bit of the, the shock out, out of that. Um, moving to the back of the bike, the, I didn't mention the chains, but they are, in case you're wondering, uh, just standard uh, one eighth of an inch track chains that are being used here um, but they are gold uh, which is cool um, and then this whole rear section of, of the bike is pretty impressive so this is just standard steel tubes that have just been uh, brazed and welded together but this is a, is a cnc machined part you can see i'm going to call it a rear triangle section um, has been cnc machined out of aluminium and also anodized it is well, aluminium helps keep the weight down, but this is not a lightweight bike. So, <laughs> Neil says it weighs about 40 kilos, which is absolutely massive. I think I'd struggle to lift that up. Um, so yeah, you're not gonna want it for your hill climb. So this rear tire, when I take a look at it, you can see it's got a massive scuff in the side of it. It's no longer even because of the crash, which is pretty, pretty crazy. Um, so he's going to need some new tyres, so I'm sure Neil would highly appreciate some Pirellis if uh, anyone from Pirelli is, is watching. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that'd be good. Get these Dunlops off. But the, uh, the wheels are also really cool. So these wheels have been custom made um, and they were actually, uh, Neil was able to get them through sponsorship from uh, VC Revolution, which is a Colchester-based cycling club. So this is their club colours, hence the nice blue anodised hubs. Um, the reason why they're custom made is because he wanted them tubeless, because for this, tubeless is faster than having an inner tube in. Um, so there's a rolling resistance advantage, but it's also far safer, he tells me, um, having a tubeless tyre. So they had to have these wheels specially made and these rims converted so that they can be tubeless to accommodate these tires and built up with these uh, spokes on there. So yeah, I think that's um, a really cool detail. So a couple more details, crank length. Um, I mentioned these are Jura Ace track cranks. Uh, they're 165s. So he's using shorter cranks um, like everyone else. Uh, and also something I missed on the brakes is yeah, these are motorcycle brakes, but they're even even—they're bigger than most motorcycle brakes. Um, check this out, you can see at the front, there's actually extenders put in here um, so that you can run bigger discs. I mean, it's just mental, like it's a bicycle, it's got more powerful brakes than most motorcycles. It's absolutely crazy. And now Neil's gonna be going to attempt to, to break the, the world record and go over 200 miles an hour next summer. Um, and if you'd, like to support him in his attempt. He is he's mostly self-funded at the moment and would appreciate all yeah any any support. So if anyone watching this or if you know a company or something, definitely like get in contact. Um, but I'm gonna jump on the bike because I want to 
just see if I can rev it out and pedal it while it's in this stand to <laughs> see what it's like doing this massive gear. So it's not got the 90 tooth in at the moment, it's got a 70 tooth. Um, but Neil and Adam are just gonna come and hold the bike so that I don't die and end up down that ditch. <laughs> Which is a massive ditch just here. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong, eh? What could possibly go wrong? Do you want that alphabetically or chronologically? <laughs> oh my mm. God! <sighs> I'm throwing about a hundred. <sighs> Oh my God, there's not even any resistance! <laughs> How do you pedal this? <laughs> oh. Flipping heck! <laughs> Look at the speed of that! Whoa! I reckon I got up to about 20 RPM there. <laughs> and uh, well, there you go. This bike is absolutely mental. And uh, I think the idea of trying to ride this 200 miles an hour is absolutely terrifying. But if you want to see more about that and, uh, and learn more about it, well, check out the video over on the main channel. I'm gonna go now. Cheers, love you, bye. Whew, Neil is a lunatic. <laughs> It's not the worst thing that's been said about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh.